What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out the Call of Krular. Call of Krular is kind of an interesting game and that's why I'm featuring it. This is a very, very weird one. This is a game that kind of goes its own direction in the fortress survival genre. The basic premise of this game is that there are eldritch monsters coming from the edge of the screen. And don't let the 8-bit aesthetic of this game fool you. This is actually a game that's got some interesting ideas inside of it, and I think if capitalized properly would make for a really, really satisfying core gameplay loop. But the ultimate goal of the game is to protect your castle and keep your king alive. Now, the game is not turn-based, but it's also not real-time. Effectively, time only passes while you're doing something, so it's almost like the super hot, I guess, of, like, colony defense games if that makes sense. Hopefully that metaphor right there instantly gets the idea across. The game is $3 right now, and it's not flagged as being in early access, but I get the feeling there are more additions coming to the game from some of the stuff that the developer has been posting on Steam. And so anyways, as of right now, there is no meta progression. There is none of that. This game is entirely just one run, roguelike style, survive for as long as you can with no reward. However, the developer has expressed an interest in adding meta, like, kind of meta progression to the game so the ability to upgrade your units upgrade your buildings unlock new things relics stuff of that nature that kind of brings it into sort of like the rogue legacy roguelite universe and actually i think that's a really really good idea without that stuff this is one of those games that i played like four or five times and i was like all right i get the idea it was fun but i've played enough uh, but with all that stuff on in there, I think you're seriously thinking about racking up some solid playtime on the part of the player base, especially if there's ultimately extra levels and things of that nature to keep people's whistle wet. So, if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, it's $3 right now on Steam. I got the link for you down below in the description. And then on top of that, if you wanted to hang out with me live, I've got a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down there just in case you wanted to swing through. Right now we are playing Raft. The 1.0 for Raft dropped, and so we've been playing the hell out of that for like the last couple of days or so, and I'd love to have you come aboard. Let's start a new game, and I'll start explaining the way this all functions. So that right there is our king. He's running off to the castle. If the castle dies, we lose. That's pretty much all there is to it. You don't want the castle to die. Uh, for right now, what we really want to do is take a look at this stuff. So this is all land up here. Every single one of these squares is land that I can exploit by putting a node on top of it. The game does you a little bit of a favor by allowing you one of each node at the beginning of the game. But if a monster comes from the left and comes into contact with any of these nodes, it explodes instantly and they just keep carrying on. Which means that it's very, very easy in this game if you don't defend yourself properly to end up soft locked and unable to produce certain resources. So pay attention. Like, layout is a big deal in this game. It really sincerely is. Uh, we've got ourselves gold mines. We've got water. We've got rocks. And we've got wood. Now, what would I use those things for? Well, you use these things because down here you have blueprints. As you pick up certain combinations of items, you are given blueprints. And these blueprints will allow you to make buildings that do various things, or they will allow you to convert things into refined materials, which then unlock more buildings, so on and so forth. This does not clear every time you play the game. It stays unlocked, but you can delete it whenever you want if you wanted to do like a hardcore roguelike mode where you wanted to memorize everything this is the timeline right here we don't have anything happening on day one it's going to be pretty relaxed however once day two gets here things are going to get a little bit crazy so keep that in mind these little dots above here are how many guys we have stationed inside each of these buildings for right now we only have two soldiers stationed inside the gold mine that means that if a monster comes over here instead of consuming the building instantly they have to fight these guys and kill them before they're able to destroy the building and these guys return fire and in turn kill the monsters now, they have three attack and they have two hp so that's pretty cool. All right. Well, that pretty much puts us at the point where we want to start playing the game. So let's think about what we want to do here. I think that expanding our land is a really good idea. And I think that building a house is also a really, really good idea. So I'm going to start with the house because the house produces workers. And then the workers allow us to fill in these slots and they will produce free resources for us that we won't even have to like pay time for in order to get after, which allows you to get ahead of the difficulty curve. So let's go for a house first. We need a plank, we need a brick, and we need a wood, and we need a stone. Okay, so four stones is going to get us to where we want to be with that. We can convert three stones into a brick like so. So there's the first half of our equation. 
This is where it's going to get a little bit more complicated because the forest can either give you wood or it can give you food. And so sometimes you strike out really, really hard and you spend like half the first day trying to get the wood together that you need to build your first house. But this time it looks like we were fortuitous. There's our house right there. I'm going to put it right there. And so now we have our house. And what we'll want to do here is we will actually want to start... Well, the water will be useful later, but not necessarily right now. We want to get these buildings producing by dragging gold onto it. I do think the game has a really nice emergent UI. This is one of those games that does a really good job of explaining itself without actually ever speaking a single word of tutorial. It, it does it in the same way that like Kingdom New Lands does, where it's just like, go here, click this, drag this over to here, and pretty soon you'll get the rough idea. I want to put a castle right there, so I'm actually most interested in expanding my land to the right. And if we wanted to expand our land, we basically need one of each resource. So I'm going to get three waters, three golds, three rocks, three woods, and we're just going to mash that out. There we go. So now we've got three spaces over to the right that we can mess around with. Now that we have our three spaces knocked out, we've got to decide what we want to put on top of those spaces. I would suggest we start out with maybe a barracks. That's going to take us like eight stones. But, it'll do. So there's our barracks. We'll put that right there. Barracks is ready to rock. We're gonna pay the the, uh, the we're gonna pay the garrison some gold in order to start producing a soldier, so that if any of these guys die over here, we can replace them. Our worker is done. I'm going to put the worker on the stone mine, I guess, because I always need more stone for stuff. Now you may notice that the buildings are now crying out for food. What does that do? Because you already paid the gold, right? Well, when you put food on top of one of these, it advances the the track so that you produce units even faster. And so that's kind of where you want to get that moving from. I would like to do another castle on this side. I don't know if that's going to be optimal. But I would like to get a castle right here. That way I can get a full six-man complement garrison over here with like two defenders, two soldiers, two archers. To like hold that line and make sure nothing makes it over to the left. And then what we can do is we can incrementally slowly replace all these buildings or like all these resource tiles on the right, basically. Uh, because what's going to happen is the darkness is going to advance from the left and it's going to eat these buildings no matter what we do. That means the game is kind of like this never-ending shuffle to the east. As long as you can without getting consumed by the eldritch monsters of Rayleigh, anyways. So, that's kind of where we're at. That's why I'm not really messing around with this gold mine right here. It's because this gold mine is going to die on the first wave anyways and we already have a gold mine, so like, who cares? For now, we do have replacement soldiers, and you can hot swap them out in the middle of combat. So I'm not too worried about our layout for the first wave. The second wave might get a little bit more dubious. But, if I could get another barracks and place it, like, right there, what we can do with that barracks is we can convert it into a castle with some gold. There's a free output right there. We need a brick, and if we wanted to convert that into a castle, we need... A coin, I guess. Oh, I needed the card in my hand. Unfortunate. As far as I know, there's really no way to bulldoze buildings, so that was probably actually a really dumb play. Alright, well, let's see what we can get here. I've got enough to expand my land twice. And there's our first monster right there. So he's going to wipe out this gold mine pretty quickly. Uh, we do have another worker, so I'll go ahead and put them on the stone mine. And we have a brickyard over here that we can make. I think the brickyard, I think you put one stone into it and a worker into it, and it just continuously produces bricks, I think. And the lumber yard does the same thing, but with planks. And the gold mine does the same thing, but with gold coins, if I remember right. Now, let's get these things spitting out soldiers, though. That's what I want more than anything else, is to have soldiers spitting. I'm going to get a gold coin over here, so that when this is done, I can start producing archers for tomorrow. Got another free rock right there. He's going to eat that gold mine. That's okay. It's not going to be that considerable of an issue. However, let's go ahead and replace this gold mine real fast. Over here. And then I would also like to... What's it going to cost me for the water? Three waters, two stone. Okay, we will replace the river over there. 
What's it gonna cost me for a rock pile? Three rocks, two gold? That's fine. I can live with that. Put that over there. And... Now I think I just need a forest. So we need three wood and two water. There's our two water. There's our wood. And so we'll move the forest over here. As you can see, they're fighting. These guys do get wounded. I haven't figured out a way to heal them yet. So I don't know if that's entirely possible. But we'll swap him out real quick. All right. I've got another soldier right there, which is great. We've got a free rock right there, which is also fantastic. I would like to expand my land a little bit further. So I'm going to get rid of some of these foods over here just to conclude his output. Okay, we've got enough gold. So now what I need is archers. There we go. So archers are going to be producing, and we survived our first wave. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. Things could have gone worse. Uh, we do get the monster's corpse every time they die. The monster's corpses cannot be disposed of unless you have an alchemy lab. And so that actually basically it uses up one of your inventory slots on a monster corpse that's like effectively corrupting your land. I think that's the general idea that they're going for, which is why they place all the way to the right, and then they start to move to the left as you get more and more of them. I think it's supposed to represent corruption happening, but... Let's get two golds, two waters. Wood? There we go. I need more land. Far, far, far more land than we currently have. However, what this does mean is that we can effectively seed this entire area to the enemy and not care. That's what this really means, uh, because we have basically a barracks right here that's going to be looking out for us. I thought that I could convert the barracks into a castle, but I think you need the castle card, actually, in order to convert it. I'm sorry, the, you need the barracks card in order to convert it into a castle, so I kind of messed up the ordering. Go ahead and move those archers along just to clear out some space. Don't know what I have bricks for. What was I holding on to bricks for? I don't actually know. I also don't really have a worker going, which is a mistake. You definitely want to have workers going. The castle... I'll probably just go two fighters, two archers over here, I think. And I'm actually just going to let all this fall so that I can put a castle right here where the forest is. And we can have six guys in it, and that'll hold us for many, many days until the darkness gets to the castle, I think. That's the operating plan for right now, anyways. A berry bush would probably be a good idea for food, but then again, I found that food is kind of a trap. In general. Uh, we do need a... Let's see here. We do need an alchemist, so we could do that. Ah, it's day three. That little marker right there, it tells you that today the darkness is going to move on. And as you can see, tentacles and things grow from the edge of the screen, too. Just in case this whole experience wasn't uh, terrifying enough. And then I think the other thing we need for the alchemist is another brick. Yeah, there we go. So now we can make our alchemist. Alchemist is ready to go. The function of the alchemist is to dispose of these bodies. That's pretty much it. He just keeps the bodies out of your hand, and in turn you get an item called a catalyst. I haven't survived long enough yet to figure out what the catalyst does, but maybe someday. Maybe someday. Uh, let's get a berry bush up and going, I think. I do think that I need food. And I do have one slot left. So it's three food and two water for that. I was kind of hoping. As I said, was kind of hoping. Oh, there's my archers right there. Okay, archers are good to go. So we'll put the archers back here. And I think there's also an Eldritch monster coming, so we'll put him out front. The archers are going to shoot him down before he actually destroys anything. The flying monsters, as far as I can tell, they don't seem to attack any of your buildings. They don't really seem to care all that much. However, let's get a few more archers training. And then I wouldn't be against another defender training as well, just so I can keep him like in my back pocket. What was the other thing that I was going to make? I have so much wood on me right now. Oh, yeah, I was trying to spam out food. That's what it was. I'll destroy those. Get a third one of those. Get three of those. Three of those. 
expand my land out a little bit so that we've got more tiles. And he is officially beefing with our archers right now. We will want to keep a look at all this stuff over here just to make sure it's nice and safe. But for the moment, I think we're all right. This is not going to hold for much longer. And so that's why I went to the effort of replacing all of my goodies over on this side. Now, we do need a worker inside the alchemy lab. We do need to continue producing workers so that we can get free outputs from, like, every building we possibly can. Part of me is tempted to put in another house over there. That way we'll be producing two workers at a time and we can get like everything moving faster. And I think I will. Oh cool, they killed the monster. Good for you guys. We'll get you guys over here being paragons of virtue. Um, I don't know if you guys want to be like over here. I think this is concerning. Why are they not shooting him down? They should definitely be shooting him down. Okay, apparently that doesn't go inside. There we go. They're finally shooting him down. I was starting to get worried, man. I was starting to get a little bit nervous. He's getting kind of close to my castle, dude. Like, he's on top of it right now. Like, why are, why, why are we not killing this guy? I need death, violence, destruction, despair, all that kind of stuff. But not on my people, on the enemy's people. There we go. They done killed him. We've got two more bodies to dispose of. I think I was making a house, wasn't I? So the house is going to be a brick and a plank. And then we need one more brick and one more plank. Oh, good. The enemy is here already. Yikes. Things escalate fast, don't they? Things get bad quickly. Alright. I'm kind of trapped up right now. What I would prefer to do here is before they arrive, I would like you to be right there, you to be right there, you to be right there. I do need this guy. Oh, I need fire if I wanted to cook this food. I forgot. There we go. Let me get my defender out of there. And we'll swap the slots right there like so. I think they should be able to hold this, but no guarantees. We may want to get another soldier going over here. Just in case we have to replace someone. Which does seem somewhat likely. Is there a reason why there's no attacks going off over here? Sort of confused, like, in every other playthrough I've done, they shot these guys down, but then again I stationed them inside a watchtower. So maybe the archers can only shoot the flying guys if they're in a castle or a tower. I don't know. I'll move some archers over here just in case. Like, I can always get more soldiers in on this side, so it's no biggie. Uh, yeah, they done killed him. He is dead as hell. I don't know what I want to use most of this stuff for. But I think I can build a house. So I think I'm just going to build the house. So that I can stamp out workers a little quicker. Oh my god, the corruption is getting out of control here. We have a lot of corruption happening. Uh, we can put him in right there. And we can put an archer in right there. So that should be fine. House is in. So I need gold for both houses. There we go. That's been taken care of. Castle's not really producing anything right now. I'm going to get another defender going, I think. And another soldier. Actually, just keep everything producing. That's pretty much it. Just keep everything churning out warriors. That is all. He's going to destroy that forest. So I think if we start pre-gaming...
I can get my castle built right here so that they have to cross a castle to get to my main castle. And then I will feel better about myself. However, we are somewhat limited by our hand size right now. So three coins. I'm sorry, a coin. Make a barracks. And then we need bricks. Then we can make a castle. Okay, castle is built. Castle is good to go. We should be defended on the left-hand side. We've got like 20 seconds until we get attacked again. What does this do? I have no idea what i do with this thing. Now we can make a mirror out of it, but we need fire, and we don't have elemental fire. So I'll pick up one more rock, and we'll make a fire pit. We'll put the fire pit over there. And it looks like, oh, we can get lightning. I actually get spells. Interesting. Okay, put another worker in right here because I need that thing to churn through bodies a little bit faster. And then if I have another worker over here, I was going to say I queued them up around the same time. So, like, let's throw them in right there. We're starting to get fairly automated right now. Give me a little bit of that business. Oh, what the hell is that thing? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I definitely need all you guys in there because I have no clue what that thing is or what it's going to be what it's going to do. Like I'm kind of like outside my comfort zone right now with regards to where I've been in the game and what I've done. I wish that I had more soldiers. That's what I wish more than anything else. I very much wish I had more soldiers. This little front guy is going to fold, and he's going to fold hard. Well, they killed one. That's nice. That soldier is in, so we can put him in now. And hopefully he holds that line. I do have a coin. I need one more fire. Cool. Apparently it allows me to just, like, spam spells at people, which is super rad. And I'm totally okay with that. I wish that that would produce faster. I didn't realize that there was castable spells inside of this game. That's rad as hell. Nice. Apparently I can also restore, I guess? Oh, that's going to be the healing I was talking about at the beginning of the level. I think it lets me heal my guys. That's pretty rad. I could go for that. Give me a little bit more gold over here. Just to kind of get units trickling out. would like food make a brick I think our last slot is gonna have to be another alchemist I don't think there's much of a way around it I got to get some of these cards out of my hand yeah give me an alchemist we'll put that right there we'll drag that card out alchemist needs a worker that's fine Amazing how a game that is effectively turn-based can be so intense. Throw him out front. Got soldiers training. A couple of fires, and we can make a couple of meals. Finish off his deployment. There we go. Give me a final soldier in there that's going to hold the line, and I think that should be solid. Is my catalyst done? My catalyst is done. Love it. Okay. Give me a little bit more food. Oh, never mind. It finished without me. Okay, we're going to put this worker inside of there so that that's being worked on too because we just got to find a way to get these cards out of our hand. 
it's just undeniably important that we get these cards. Oh, dude, it just grabbed the land over there. Okay, all right, that was horrifying. I hate it. What mirror does? Let's find out. I've never seen this card before, so let's see what it does. You gave me food, brother. The one thing I didn't want you to give me, and you gave it to me. You gave it to me hard, and you gave it to me relentlessly. Oh. It gives you a free version of something. What is that right there? It's filling in. Oh, it's filling in with an element every single time. I wonder if that's the win criteria, is that you have to cast each spell one time, and then once you've done that, I bet you that's what it is. You've got to cast each spell one time, and then once you've accomplished that, you win the game, I bet. So we need to cast Freeze. And we need to cast... Can I just, like, feed you guys? I need some of these bodies, like, out of my business right now. There are far too many bodies around. I may be overplaying my hand a bit, but I don't even care. All right, so we've got monsters coming on up. I need a soldier. I need a soldier. I need a defender. I need a worker. I need food so that I can mash them out quickly. There's another defender, so if this falls... Oh, dude, there's so many of them. There's so, so many. Uh, three waters and what? Three waters and a gold coin. Unfortunate. Okay, get rid of the stone. Oh, I grabbed the wrong thing. I just wasted my time. No, dude, the bodies. They're filling up my... Put the defender in there. The bodies are filling up my track. I can't discard these. I'm sorry, castle. I don't want to do this because you're valuable. But that is like life. I need a coin. Cast a freeze spell. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. I'm going to assume it was a good thing, but I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing. Freezing my enemies doesn't seem like the worst idea. Get some of these bodies out of here. God, it is getting crowded in this inventory. Can I throw these out? I can throw those out. Okay. Yeah, we've got problems. We've got issues. I'm trying to stay on top of them, but they're not making it easy. Last spell we haven't cast is Restore. So let's get three coins. And it looks like three meals. There's our restore spell. And then it's a catalyst. Oh, two catalysts. Okay, so we need two catalysts and one of each spell. Oh, dude, this is going to be a headache to get out. But this is a really cool game, is it not? Like, don't let the graphical style throw you off. Like, I know how it goes. Like, a lot of people, they see a game, they're like, graphics suck, don't care about it. This is a very unique idea in the realm of strategy and defense games. This is a very, very unique idea that someone has effectively made the super hot of Colony Defense. I like it. I think it's pretty rad. We're out of time for the day. This game is called Call of Krular. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Thank you very much for the luxury of your time. We'll probably check in on this game in about a year or so just to see what's been added to it, if anything. But up until then, it's time for me to go. Bye, everybody.